Early School Living brings a cocktail of risks. These risks include uh, a basic alienation and disconnection from society and social networks. It brings risks for mental health, for uh, crime, for substance abuse, for uh, uh, unemployment, for poverty. So it, 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 it brings a range of interconnected uh, problems, uh, not inevitably, but certainly it heightens it as a risk factor. This is a, a reason why it is of paramount importance that we keep a firm focus on early school leaving in future EU strategies. So early school leaving is directly relevant to a myriad of key policy goals across society. These include social inclusion, active citizenship and democracy, health and well-being, personal and social fulfilment, employment, poverty prevention, leadership and creativity. So early school, keeping young people meaningfully engaged in school is a vital pulse for keeping a vibrant, healthy and inclusive society across Europe. There is not just one magic trick or wand that's going to solve this issue. This is a complex, multi-dimensional issue that requires multifaceted solutions. Some of those would include, for example, bringing much more strategic planning between health ministries, education ministries and social services for multidisciplinary based teams in and around schools to deal with the complex needs that many vulnerable young people across Europe face today. We also need to address issues such as school climate issues, so the atmosphere in the school, positive relationships with teachers, uh, anti-bullying strategies that are meaningful, that are in dialogue with students, as well as uh, having firm anti-segregation and anti-discrimination policies uh, to address issues of school climate. We also need to de develop a focus, uh, a stronger focus, on initial teacher education for teachers' relational competences, their pedagogical competences, but also their cultural competences. So we need more in initial teacher education reform on this issue. Students' voices and parents' voices are key as well. I think we need, in my view at least, to develop driving committees for incl inclusive systems in every school uh, across Europe. Uh, these, these committees would be developed, uh, composed of students, of parents, of range of professionals as well as including teachers obviously, uh, to help drive reform for inclusive systems and a positive school climate uh, across the system. Uh, we also need to look at, at key issues such as targeting particularly vulnerable groups. That these can, be, and I think we need a more distinct strategy around that. So, for example, it could be uh, young people who've experienced trauma. You also got many migrants who've experienced trauma, uh, as well as obviously uh, issues such as hearing the voices of the Roma minority about their experiences of school and what solutions they would suggest to make school a more meaningful place for them. There's also other groups, for example. Uh, 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 parents uh, who's, who may be in prison and the children's uh, uh, you know, separation anxiety from th that group. There is a, a range of gr vulnerable groups. Children in care is another group that we need to look at. So we need a, a, a much more focused approach for the subgroups and uh, for, for distinct strategies for, for those, those groups. Firstly, all the ministries, such as health, education and social affairs, need to come together for a strong commitment for multidisciplinary teamwork uh, around these issues. Teachers cannot solve all of the issues uh, and in, a, in the complexity of issues that, that schools face today. They, are, they play one key role, but we need a range of professionals to address the multifaceted complex needs. We also need initial teacher education reform, as, a, as I've emphasised, for ped pedagogical, cultural and relational competences of teachers. We need to address child poverty urgently as well uh, and, and strategies around that. We need also to uh, invest further in family support services linked with schools, also community-based one-stop shop services where you, you stop the fragmentation of local services to bring services together into one, one uh, space so that uh, a range of groups can, needs can be met. The, there are many other priority issues, such as, for example, uh, working uh, with minorities uh, about th to design systems that, that uh, listen to their voices and meet their language needs. So there are a range of uh, priorities uh, that, that need to be firmly addressed today. Also, the issue, I think, there needs to be a much firmer stance taken on anti-segregation policies and anti-discrimination policies as part of a multi-dimensional strategy that is urgently needed.
Uh, it's important to recognise that early school leaving is one of the headline, there's only two headline targets for education for the past decade across Europe. For ET 2020, reduction of early school leaving to 10% across Europe is one of only two headline targets for early school leaving. So it is of paramount importance and has been a major policy priority across the EU for the past decade. Uh, against that backdrop, uh, we've been involved in developing a, an evaluation for the European Commission of the implementation of the Council recommendation from 2011 for early school leaving prevention. So this has examined the implementation of the 2011 Council recommendation across 37 countries and, and it also has involved 10 country case studies to analyse in depth the success factors, the implementation factors, which elements have or have not been developed uh, across different countries. Some countries have developed national strategies, others have integrated uh, an approach to early school leaving prevention as part of wider education strategies, but, it's, but I think it's important to note that a large majority of countries across Europe have made a strong uh, attempt and concerted attempt to uh, address this vital social issue over the past decade. The overall picture is largely very positive, though much still needs to be done. We see a reduction of, in 20 member states of early school leaving since 2011. Uh, we see also at a percentage level a reduction from 13.4% to 10.6% since 2011. So this is substantial progress. We see also that Portugal has had the largest decrease in early school leaving since 2011 of over 11%. It has stagnated in eight countries out of the 28 in the EU. Uh, two countries, it has uh, increased early school leaving, only two out of 28. They are Slovakia and Sweden. The reasons why it may have stagnated, I think there's not just one answer. In some countries, it may be that there has not been a national systematic strategy for early school leaving prevention, such as, for example, in Denmark and Luxembourg. Uh, other reasons may be, for, for example, um, in, in, Slo in Slovakia you have a situation where they've only recently brought in a national strategy. So that may take time to be implemented and obviously needs resources for implementation. In Sweden there is a, a, an issue perhaps of increased uh, migration and, for, and foreign nationals in the country, but I don't think that is sufficient of itself to explain the, 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 the heightened uh, rates of early school leaving. As many other countries have also had increases in foreign nationals. Uh, since 2011 and their rates have not increased so dramatically. So it suggests that there are other factors involved. We also see some countries like Ireland and the Netherlands where in, uh, increases in foreign nationals have actually uh, brought uh, reductions in early school leaving because the foreign uh, national population uh, have performed uh, better than the local population.